Bill Henshaw here again, Constitutional Crisis Channel. And I'm going to start with the current events video, which is going to segue into another one. I'm going to put a lot of things together. Hopefully you'll understand how the system is supposed to work, not how it does. Current events. We have in Chicago the case of Laquan McDonald, who's a black guy that was accosted by police and was shot 16 times while he's walking away from them holding a knife. Must have been real threatening. They must have been really afraid for their lives. Well, amazingly enough, one of the cops actually has gotten charged with murder there. Probably not murder in the first degree, but at least murder. But there's a, the big news about this is the Cook County Grand Jury has said that the cover-up by the Chicago police with the code of silence was a criminal act, which is probably the first time something like that has ever gotten into a grand jury. And we'll see what happens from that. Okay, so that one's encouraging in some respects, not so much in others. Now, two other cases you might have heard of, one of them in Minnesota, uh, where this guy up there got shot, uh, you know, seven times while he was stopped in a car and reaching to get his permit for his to carry a handgun. And the cop just shoots him, Philando Castile. And recently, a Minnesota jury couldn't even convict this bastard of second-degree manslaughter. Yet, yet again, second-degree murder, which is what the charge should have been. So that's now a dead issue unless they bring charges against him in the federal court, which I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. Although, in theory, they could bring a charge for violation of civil rights, but who knows. And then on top of that, we have the case in Cincinnati where the jury came back uh, deadlocked in a similar case where this guy shot another black guy with a traffic stop that hadn't done anything wrong except have an expired license plate. And yet he was afraid for his life and testified before the jury. I'd love to see this chair filled testimony. He was acting in good faith and was afraid for his life in the course of this traffic stop. Now some obvious questions come up here. I mean, if these cops are afraid for their lives in ordinary traffic stops like this, we're not talking about Grand Theft Auto here or catching somebody in the act of robbing a bank, like Bonnie and Clyde. That's not what we're talking about here. So therefore, there's no probable cause at all. There's no reason to be afraid for life and limb. And this to me looks like, and I'm willing to bet you that the cops involved here, all of them, likely are veterans and all of them likely had PTSD. And as I said in one of my earlier videos, situation like that, that's a disqualification to hold any job in law enforcement outside of maybe a desk job. And these are reasons why this is true. We can't have this. We just can't. Now, the other problem is cops are clearly not being trained in the scope and, and, and legality of their duties here. And whoever is responsible for that, and in California, it's kind of murky at the top as to who the responsibility really is with. At the moment, I'm taking the position county council here. But you could argue that the governor, who does, after all, have the constitutionally mandated duty to take care that the laws are faithfully executed, may be the responsible party here, ultimately. But we've got to find out who it is and get these cops trained, because it's getting to the point now, and the cops are saying, gee, we're afraid for our lives because every damn traffic stop we're making. Well, gee, why can't we as citizens say, quite legitimately, that when law enforcement officials appear, we're afraid for our lives. Because not only we don't know what they're going to do, maybe shoot us in the head if we, you know, reach for a document or something that they can't see, and just shoot us dead and get away with it. And it's even worse, because with traffic stops, you know, my four decades, and things are starting to turn around here, but there's no known way to go in there and quote-unquote tell it to the judge. You can't raise any issues of jurisdiction, there's no known way to do that. You go in there, you have no right to trial by jury, no right to an appeal, no right to effective assistance of counsel, no right to get a bill of particulars answered, which defines jurisdiction and venue and tells you what the elements of the crime are. There is nothing there, no right to statutory habeas corpus in which actual innocence is not grounds for issuance of the writ. So you have no relief in the quote-unquote trial court and there isn't any anywhere else in sight either. So what does that tell you as an informed citizen when you get approached by a law enforcement officer and you know all of this and that there isn't anything you can currently do about it? 
Now that's the whole point of the document packets that I had put together for just situations like this in all criminal settings, most particularly at the moment in the traffic court, quote unquote. And they're available, we'll get you details of that before we get through the videos here. But that's what I'm doing, and you put these things in from day one, or even later, because the issues I raise are structural jurisdictional errors that you can raise at any time, you're going to derail these bastards every time in the traffic court. They can't beat you. It's just that simple. If you do it right and take care of business and set the record, uh, you're going to walk. Like in my case, I can't even get to an arraignment, let alone get to a trial. They're not going to do it because they can't answer the questions and they know what the consequences for that are. But this is what has to change. And in the upcoming video, I'm going to show you uh, what should happen as opposed to what is happening and what we can do about it to make some real changes here. But I want to encourage the law enforcement people up front to go to the people that are training you and say, why are you putting us in these kinds of positions where we might have to confront a situation where it, the question is going to be who's faster on the draw here. And by the way, I'm not making this up. And like everything that I say, I've got solid support, in this case, from the Supreme Court of the United States, <clears throat> a case called John Badal <clears throat> versus United States, 177 U.S. 529, where they reversed a conviction for murder of a policeman <clears throat> in this case because he didn't have probable cause, he didn't have a warrant, he didn't have anything, and he approached Bad Elk and attempted to take him into custody and a scuffle ensued and the cop was killed. And the court said in reversing the decision here that at common law a man had a right to self-defense. And if the cop shows up without any probable cause, without any warrant, without anything, he's not acting within the scope of his authority. And therefore, the right to self-defense come into play. And they said, on the facts of this case, we don't even think he could have been convicted of manslaughter. What I don't know as a matter of interest at this point is if Bad Elk was ever retried, which I doubt. I'm going to try to look into that and see if I can find out. But the Supreme Court said all this in this case. You can look it up. Google it. It'll be in the, in the notes below. Bad Elk v. U.S. You can look it up and read it yourself. And if this is what we have to start doing... If we're going to have no peaceful remedies and the judges are going to throw our stuff out without a hearing and say, sorry, we can't help you. And as you know, if those of you listening to my videos, I have the California Supreme Court saying that. That you appear to present federal questions that are beyond the jurisdiction of California courts. Now that's a video for another day, but if that's what they're going to say and say, sorry, we can't help. What the hell are you supposed to do? Thank you.